Hi everybody, it's your buddy and pal Carnex, Star Wars Armada Explained. We're going to be looking at B-Wings today, or as a lot of people like to call them, Bay-Wings, because they're pretty Bay. So Bay-Wings are a squadron for the Rebels. So B-Wings, uh, if you see there, the generic version, you can bring as many of them as you have the points to be able to bring, which for squadrons it's 134 points in a standard 400 point game. So B-Wings, oh, that's some crazy thing going on there. There we go. B-Wings, you can see their symbol in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, opposite of that, you're going to see their point cost, which is 14 points. So for 14 points, it's a whole big hurt package in high hole and just, oh my gosh, B-Wings are so good. Um, and we'll get into why that is. So B-Wings, you'll see that their speed is only two. They're definitely one of the slowest squadrons in the game, but there are ways to kind of help get around that so speed two five hole though still really good five hole they throw three blue die for anti-squadron and their anti-ship armament is a blue and a black die oh my gosh and why is that so good well they carry the the keyword of bomber meaning that when they do throw a, a critical symbol on their die that also counts as a damage when attacking ships meaning that b-wings have the potential of throwing three damage in a single attack. And that is really good because kind of like three damage is kind of like that sweet spot where, you know, for even large ships, it's like, oh man, like even if I redirect this, that wipes out, you know, a shield zone, either in my front or my left or right, or if they're hitting like a spot that doesn't have any shields, it's still, it's a lot of damage. So let's get into B-Wings. So the B-Wings... Uh, for in terms of their speed, you can see here, distance 2, you got 1, and the red is 2, and then 3, 4, 5. You can see there, it doesn't seem like distance 2 is all that great, especially when you see them, you know, set up across the table, they're, they're way down over here, you know, maybe. It's like, oh, they can't go very far or very fast. Um, but where their strength comes into play is when they're being helped along by other card abilities like fighter coordination teams from something like a Nebulon B or maybe an MC-80. You know, because those typically have really high squadron values to be able to help push these squadrons towards where they need to be. Um, you'll even see them maybe on like Peltas, because Peltas, they go slow, B-Wings go slow, so the Peltas really help get those B-Wings and set yourself a good pace. And heck, even the list that took second at Gen Con this year was double Peltas with fighter coordination teams and a whole mess of B-Wings. And pretty much like, okay, if you want to come eat my Peltas, you got to fight through all my B-Wings. Um, or if you just let me kind of creep up towards you, uh, my B-Wings, you know, are going to come get you. And, you. and the part of that too is that you Rebels, uh, all fighters follow me. If you are bringing a Pelta, Typically, they're going to have that title equipped. Not always, but sometimes. Or if you have a CR-90, uh, throw Liberator title on there and bring that one-time use of, a, of All Fighters Follow Me. It's typically only needed at the one time. So now your B-Wings are suddenly speed 3, and then again, if they're being pushed along by fighter coordination teams, like their threat range becomes huge. Their, their speed 2 is not really a limitation in the right builds, in the right hands. And still being able to throw 3 blue die, they still are capable of dogfighting. Um, and with the high hole value, I mean, they pretty much can engage TIE Fighters and, and usually end up on top. Um, compared to the X-Wings, which X-Wings are 13 points, um, and sure, they might be able to travel a speed more, and they have four blue anti-squadron dice, but again, they're throwing only that red dice with Bomber, which is not nearly as high as a damage output as potentially three. So... I mean, let's, let's walk through it in terms of, you know, if you do get up within distance one to attack a target... Again, if you're throwing that blue and that black, which hey, even then that's still two damage, it's still really good. And where you'll see a lot of pairing with B-Wings is potentially people bringing still like Tor and Far or Bomber Command Center. Because Tor and Far allows them to re-roll that blue die. Like for example, maybe they rolled uh, an accuracy in a blank. It's like, well... I can Bomber Command Center that black, in which case it rolled back into a blank, in which case you can be like, oh, I still need to do a, do something with this attack. Now I can troll and far this blue, and, <coughs> okay, Vassal, let's see how you're going to roll. So you know, let's try that again. There we go. All right. 
So, you know, you can re-roll that blue die at least into some kind of damage. Or again, if you're just trying to fish and you're just wanting to be like, I want maximum damage output. There we go. Something like that, for example. And I have seen somebody throw their attack dice and, yeah, get the, the accuracy on the blue and the blank on black. And then they're like, okay, well, I'll just re-roll it with Bomber Command Center and Tone Far. And then now you've got three damage. And so, again, for a ship like the Onager, it could spend a, a redirect. And sure, it could move two shields to the side and then take two on the front. B-Wings, there's never just one. You know, then there's there's that one, and then there's the one after that. Then what happens if he throws, you know, three or two damage? Well, then you brace and take one, but then, like, you can see how these squadrons really start to compound on these, on ships, especially small ships and medium ships. They just really start to wear out. Or if you they are attacking a larger ship, you're, you're wiping out shield zones so that when your ships finally do get in range or are in range to attack with red dice, they're punching in the hole at that point. B-Wings are incredibly powerful. Don't let that speed too fool you, especially when you compare them to all how fast all the Empire troops get around. Because even if you do come in, for example, to engage with, like, Interceptors, you know, the B-Wing can still throw those three blue die... And in this case, it's only dealing the one damage, but, you know, typically you're looking at about two damage. And those interceptors, even if they're throwing, you know, the two counter back, you know, the B-Wing can usually soak up at least two interceptors or two to three squadrons, depending on how well your opponent is rolling or not rolling. Um, but So B-Wings are still good in a dogfight. Uh, they're not heavy, so they can still protect your own ships, which is what makes them, you know, uh, comparable to... Why bring them and why not a Y wing? Well, again, B wings throwing the double blue die or double die. Y wings only throwing still the one die. Y wings are heavy, um, and this is only four points more. It has another anti squadron dice. Uh, y wings, sure they have one more hole, but I mean, there's pros and cons to bringing both, and it all depends on what your fleet list is set up to be. But generally, B wings in Right builds, right hands, my opinion is that they are slightly better than Y wings. But there are definitely, there's comparisons. It all, again, just all depends on what you need, time and place. So that's B wings. There's nothing super crazy going on about them. Like, like I said, you really want to bring like fighter coordination teams to maximize uh, your B wing use. Okay, well, let's talk about the unique generic squadron. Which is, why do we call them that? It's because uh, it's unique in the fact that there's a little dot or bullet point in front of its name. In which case, this is Dacker Squadron. But you can see it does not come with any defensive tokens. That's why we call them unique generics or unique gene uh, generic uniques or etc. So what's the difference about this B-Wing? Well, this B-Wing um, keeps the same speed, same health, but it throws two blue and a black dice on anti-squadron but it still has that blue-black for anti-ship. This squadron not only has Bomber, but it also has the Swarm keyword, which this card is only 15 points, so it's one point more than a regular B-Wing. And remember, Swarm allows you to re-roll a dice when you're attacking enemy squadrons. So why would you bring something like Dagger Squadron over a normal B-Wing? Well, in most situations, you're not. Um, swarm is nice. Can't deny the usefulness of Swarm if you're trying to get a little bit more dogfighting capability in. Um, but for an extra point, I mean, you, you're, you're usually still bringing other squadrons that are dedicated in that fighter-killing role. That's not typically what you're bringing a B-Wing for. Um, compare, I mean, you could pair them up with something like Z95s, Lieutenant Blount, and yeah, you're getting a lot of reroll capability for in terms of anti-squadron, but again, you know, just because B-Wings can do a bit of dogfighting, that's not where the specialty is. You still want to bring other squadrons that are better at that. But, you know, if, if you want to, Dagger is fun. I, there's definitely still, um, some instances where you could say, you know, Dagger has some usefulness. So that's Dagger Squadron. Let's talk about 10 Nub. Oh man, 10 Nub. Everybody hates 10 Nub. So 10 Nub is unique. You can only have one of him in your fleet, just like with Dagger Squadron and Kalen Farlander that I'm going to cover here in a moment. Again, speed 2, 5 hole. Uh, he is 19 points. And again, he's got the double blue, black for anti squadron. Again, blue, black for anti ship. He still just has the bomber keyword, but his card ability. His card ability is so good. He's got double brace. It says. 
While attacking a squadron, you may spend one blue die with a critical icon. If you do, each other enemy squadron at distance one of the defender suffers one damage. Why is this so good, and why is it better than Mahler Mythil's ability? So if you watch my TIE Fighter Squadron video, you know that Mahler Mythil, he does an AoE 1 damage around himself with any squadron he's engaged with at distance 1. Meaning if he came down and plopped himself next to all these B-Wings, all those B-Wings would suffer 1 damage before he even attacked anything. Very powerful ability, except, for example, if all these B-Wings are obstructed to Mahler Mythil and they're hiding around this uh, debris field, if he came and plopped right here, guess what? Even though they're all at distance 1, uh, he's not engaged with any of them, meaning his ability doesn't work because it relies on engagement. And these are all obstructed to him, meaning no engagement. So why is Tennub better than Mahler Mythil? Well, there's a variety of reasons. One, again, double brace, bomber, uh, 19 points. So Mahler is 15, right? Okay, so 15 for Mahler. So you're spending four points more, just four only four points more you get somebody who can bomb like crazy and also has the ability to dogfight and really kick some butt if you need him to, to dogfight because his ability does not rely on engagement at all it doesn't require line of sight remember his card ability just says you know any target that is at distance one of the target you're attacking takes one damage they suffer one damage and this damage can't be scattered this damage can't be braced, it can't be redirected, because they're not. it's not an attack, it's just uh, damage, it's a splash damage effect. So what What am I meaning by that? Well, for example, let's say I'm attacking Mauler Mythil, and he is sitting in this debris field, and these interceptors are kind of like hiding behind him, saying, you know, uh -huh, you, have to, you have to come through Mauler in order to get to us. Well, Tian Nub, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to drop my black die, I'm going to throw double blue. In this case, I got exactly what I want. So before the defender can do anything, because this is still while attacking, it's still before the spend defense token step, I can spend that blue critical effect. I remove it from the attack pool. I say I'm spending this blue critical die. I'm going to trigger TM's NEM's ability, which again, it's while attacking a squadron. You may spend one blue die with a critical icon. If you do, each other enemy squadron at distance one of the defender suffers one damage. So the target you're attacking doesn't suffer any damage from his special, but everyone at distance one of him sure does. So these interceptors that are hiding back here, guess what? They get plinked for one damage apiece, uh, and then you're still doing one damage to your target. So now Mauler has to decide, oh man, do I just take this one damage, or do I spend my very useful scatter to not take that damage, especially... You know, if this compounds, if there's follow-up targets. And again, why is this so good? Because it's not only just the fact of, it doesn't matter that Tian Nub can't see his targets. Because even if, for example, let me see here. Like, like this, for example. Even though there might be a ship between Tian Nub and, we'll say, this interceptor. Guess what? Well, maybe the large base maybe doesn't work out so quite so well. But maybe if I do something like this. Here we go. There we are. All right, so now you see that 10 Nub, he's at distance one of the time interceptor. Sure, it's obstructed, but again, he can still make an attack. And then if he does get that hit, blue hit and crit, again, distance one of him. Sometimes you'll have like a bunch of squadrons that are all hiding over here. And if they're all distance one, even though he's attacking him, it's splashing out to all the squadrons, the enemy squadrons that are around him that could be hiding on the other side of this ship. Uh, or obstacles, or what have you. And so, you combine this with something like Yavaris. Uh, I mean, I've had, like, Tenub fly up, attack one squadron twice, just to deal splash damage to all the scatter aces around him. And watch all my scatter aces drop from three health to one health from two, you know, Yavaris attacks. Or, uh, maybe it's a, la it's a last first, uh, maybe there's Adar Talon. I mean, there's a variety of different ways where you can suddenly see, especially for Imperials, all of your squadrons die in the space of one to two activations. And that is just an extremely powerful ability. Cannot understate that. I, I've brought Tin Nub um, in my Corellian or my Rebellion in the Rim campaign, 
And my opponents initially just threw all their squadrons at him, but then he would live because five health, double brace. Uh, and then he he gets to go, and then he's splashing, dealing damage, and then my squadrons just kind of mop up after that. He's just extremely strong for 19 points. And again, he's still throwing uh, that blue-black for anti-ship. is still capable of dealing that three damage. Um, just very, very strong squadron. And again, don't let that speed too fool you. Typically, they're backed by fighter coordination teams. So that's why Ten Nub is so powerful, because his ability doesn't rely on uh, engagement to work like Mauler Mythil does. It's just, is it at distance one? Yes, take a damage. All right. Let's talk about Kalen Farlander. So Kalen Farlander, you really don't see terribly too often. Uh, again, speed two, five hole, double brace. He's 20 points. Uh, again, Kalen Farlander is unique. You only have one of him in your fleet. Um, but he only, he still, he, he only throws through blue anti-squadron dice, but his anti-ship dice is double black. Double black, I think he's the only double black bomber in Armada. I could be wrong about that, but I'm extremely confident he is the only double black bomber in Armada, which means his potential output is four damage if he rolls double hit crits on those things, which is... That's mind blowing. That's so much damage for twenty points. So Kalen, what uh, he still only just has the bomber keyword. What is his card ability? While attacking a ship, if the defending hull zone has no shields, you may re-roll any number of die in your attack pool. So his ability only comes into effect when attacking a ship, and only if the hull zone he's attacking has no shields. So, like, for example, if you're activating, like, two or three squadrons, you fly up, you, you know, you shoot, like, this whole zone, for example, and maybe he's redirected to over here. Well, guess what? Now, for your last activation, you bring up Kalen Farlander. Now you can shoot that unshielded side. You can roll your double black. In this case, you're like, oh, you know, normally that would have been like, oh, oh well, but now you can trigger his special ability. Ah, I can re-roll that blank. And hey, at least you're getting two damage out of it. But most of the time, when you are rolling double black like this, you're usually going to roll a hit crit and a hit. Although Vassal is going to... Or, or double hit crits in this case, as you can see there. I mean, odds are pretty good you're going to get a hit crit and a hit. Um, or at least a hit crit and a blank. It's pretty rare that you only ever do like one damage. But again... You know, with that unshielded side, it's giving you that reroll ability if you want to, to fish or if you need to fix, you know, maybe you got double blanks, 20 points. Um, but typically, you still will just see more of 10 nub over Kalen Farlander because, again, you want that dual roll. You can kill squadrons and I can kill ships. Kalen Farlander is, I'm really only good at killing ships. I really don't want to fight squadrons. That's why you see t uh, 10 nub far more often than Kaelin Farlander. But again, Kaelin Farlander is the only squad in the game that can have that high of damage output. No other squad even comes close. Um, so that's B-Wings. There's no other crazy things going on with them, no like rule changes or, or interactions or anything else going on like that. Um, of course, if you, if you feel like I missed anything or got anything wrong, please be sure to point it out. Let me know. Give me some examples of where you maybe have seen B-Wings be super useful. Um, do appreciate you guys watching the videos. Uh, of course, I'm going to keep doing videos on squadrons. Got to wait for the new Wave 8 cards to come out. I'm going to keep working on my Armada reference manual. So, yeah. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. I'll catch you next time.